You're watching Chewing the Cud with my Benny Rowe and Lee Robertson. And I said, if you can get one in, you can get two in. Oh, yeah. Well, welcome to Chewing the Cud, everybody. How are you doing, Lee? I'm doing fine. Fair to middling. Fair to middling. Mm. Well, that phrase for a while. Not, a, not excellent, but, you know. Somewhere. It could dip. It could dip. It could dip. What have you got for us in the show business this week, Lee? I've got some very exciting news because the dinosaurs are coming back. <coughs> dinosaurs. I really wish you wouldn't in, do that. In Jurassic... The next one. <laughs> well, researched as always. <laughs> but on screen now, you can see all the ways of getting hold of us. It's at the Could TV on social media, where you can also follow us. The TV for our website. And on YouTube or podcast services, just look for Chewing the Cud and hit subscribe. And as people who have shared or liked one of our posts, their names scroll along above the screen, we go to Mike and the Buzz. Have you ever got lost while driving? Yes. How lost are we talking? Um, I once came back from the lakes via Gretna Green. So Manchester south of the lakes, mm. and you went north. Yeah. Quite a way north as well. Yeah, it took a long time, <laughs> and we were all sat there going, God, it's taking us long, it didn't take us this long to get here. And then it was like, oh, we, we, we were pulling at the next thing. And I was like, Great and Green, that's where people get married. And we was like, oh, sugar <laughs> lumps, very, very far away. Did, did you have sat nav? No, it was pre-sat nav. Pre-sat nav? Yeah. I don't know those massive fold-out mats. <laughs> <laughs> you go, chuk, 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 chuk. yeah. Thing. Okay, so pre sat nav. Yeah. Nineties. Mm. Early nineties. Anyway, the reason why I ask <laughs> is um, because I've got a story about a couple who okay. were livid with Ryanair. Livid. Who's not? Well, these people are definitely, definitely livid. Um, as they ended up in Paris instead of Copenhagen. Well, if <laughs> What? That's not horrific, is it? Well, it's quite different. Europe. Hotels are different places yeah, now. But it's not it's not like, you know, they were going to Benidorm and ended up in Beirut. That would be <laughs> unpleasant. That would be very unpleasant, you're right. <laughs> but you know just be thankful you can fly nowadays. <laughs> <laughs> you're allowed to leave the country. Just be thankful. Just be thankful. Don't be, don't be selfish. So they ended up in, in where? <laughs> <laughs> they were going to Paris. And they no, ended, no. They're going to Copenhagen. They're going to Copenhagen, Copenhagen. Ended in, and ended up in I Paris. Apologize. Copenhagen. And ended up in Paris. In Paris. Yeah. Well, Paris is nice, though. Yeah. It is, but. Not when you've not got a hotel. Oh, really. um, so basically, when they first raised it to the attention of the, the cabin crew, they were told, don't worry. Yeah. Just, just go back to your seat. You'll be fine. It's okay. Yeah, it's not yeah. a disaster. Oh, yeah, um, but yeah, when they found out they'd been flown to... Those eyes didn't look happy, did they? No, no. not at all. Um, but 750 miles away from where they were supposed to be. But did they fly them back? Um, they, they did get them back, yes. Um, like but... A month later. <laughs> <laughs> Freight. <laughs> been living as Parisians for half a year. And then they said, oh, we'll take it back. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, um, basically got home, but they've demanded an apology. Oh, and right now, basically, gone, no, because the reason why they got on the wrong flight. Because they were stupid. <laughs> they were basically rushing for their flight to oh, their left of time. Well. And went through the wrong gate, one for Copenhagen, well, one for Paris. So some, but then, you, people check your tickets constantly when you're going on the plane. Passes, yeah. yeah. So even if you are stupid and you've gone through the wrong gate. Surely somebody should have gone, oh, no, you're on the wrong plane. But are we there to protect the people from their own stupidity? Or do you yeah, think they the, the cake stuff went, no. yeah, come oh, on, go on, go on, off you go, <laughs> off you go. See you later. Yeah. Oh. It's so they're tutting at me all because like, yeah. Mmm, yeah. chicken or beef. You'll get don't what you're given. Don't get choice on it. Don't get air on there, in air. Yeah, you have to do it, yeah. 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 Well, um, but moving on from, from that tragic story of... Are they OK now, though? They're fine. Oh, they're fine. They got, went on the wrong holiday. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> but moving on from that story of, of woe, mm. right, um, we've got a health warning. <gasps> Be careful, OK? And this is after a man has, has left himself with chronic back pain. What's he shoved up his ass, Mike? No, it's worse than that. He's left himself in chronic back pain after trying to suck his own penis... 
I've not damaged myself doing it. Is that yeah. him? That, that's him. <laughs> Her face has been blurred for obvious reasons. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, why stop at your dick? Well, you could reach your tank quite easily. <laughs> <laughs> Rim yourself. You can't. That's actually quite difficult. <laughs> From what I've heard, what I've been told, anyway. <laughs> um, but yes, uh, as he was trying to, to self-filate, I believe the phrase is, um, he heard a, a crack and suddenly immense pain. Ooh. Um, he felt paralysed. So he couldn't physically move. Wait, he paralysed himself. He temporarily paralysed himself Ooh. while trying to flate. Oh my gosh. Um, he dragged himself to the kitchen to get some pain medication and that improved the situation. Oh, like a dog. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, so he sat in, there, sat in there for 20 minutes, dragged himself to the kitchen, but now he's been left with chronic back pain ever since. So yes, so what that tells you is you really shouldn't do it without supervision. Is that generally a picture of him? <laughs> no, it's just a picture. No, is it just like a Google picture of somebody? It's a, it's a picture of a contortionist. Oh, okay. Yes. Um, did he have to go to hospital? Um, <laughs> he did. Did he? Yeah, I um, basically got checked out and everything's fine. Did he Did he tell them what he was doing or did he do the usual, like, when they got I, out, I fell on I it. I got out of the shower <laughs> and I slipped. Yeah. And paralysed myself. Doesn't say whether he told Fibs, but they looked at it and made sure he was okay. Yeah, um, and basically he's given the, a moral of the story is to watch out and protect your body, even if you think nothing's going to happen. Or buy a flashlight. Just get someone else to do it for you. I mean, well, not everybody has that option, but there's many, many... There's apps. There's, well, there's apps, but there's many things you can buy. Like, like flashlights? Flashlights. A wet dry vacuum. Overripe melon. Those kind of things. Oh, no, you don't want an overripe melon. Seedless. Oh, yeah, that's true. Mm -hmm. But if you've got something you'd like to share with us, seedless or not, feel free to at the Cud TV on all of your usual social media channels. And that brings us to our story of the week. Okay. Now you thought the, the first two were brilliant. Yeah. This is a beauty warning. Beauty. Okay. Now this one especially I thought of you when I saw this. Mm. Okay. Because you have had some cosmetic work done. Not no. permanent. Never. You, you lip fish things. Yeah, but that is... That I've never I've never injected anything. No, it's not. Or or had anything cut. <laughs> um you know. Okay. Um well this is a story about a woman who shared her lip brush tattoo. And what this is people getting their basically lips tattooed to make them permanently a, a colour. So oh not like piss off <laughs> <on> the lips. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you can have that done. Okay. Um <laughs> Your reaction kind of shared shared by everybody there. Um, Twenty one year old Jessie Carr went to get her lips brush tattooed. Jessie Carr, <laughs> is that her name? A proper name? Yeah, Jessica. <laughs> no, Jessie Carr. Jessie Carr. She's Jessie not. Person. She's not. It's not like a real her douche name. name. No. Like, just call me Jessie Carr. No. no, that's her actual name. Her first name is Jessie. <laughs> her name is Carr. Right. Okay. That's fine. Okay. <clears throat> um, basically, hope to get them tinted a pretty colour, but apparently people on TikTok are going, "No, you've made a mistake there, babes." So yes. Um, she was surprised after some of her TikTok followers expressed amazement on how much her lips had swollen up. Well, it's cheaper than, you know, lip fillers. That's hideous. It's cheaper one, that. I mean, the, she's 21. She doesn't need to, to, you know... There's something called lipstick. I don't know if she's found about <laughs> out about it, but you can use that you can. to change the colour of your lip. <laughs> but it's also Shocker. quite messy. It's quite messy? Yeah, lipstick. Just go that. Yeah, but you leave it on the rims of glasses and... Well, no, if you get pro no, if you, no, if you apply it properly. Not if you get, like, the, the long-lasting lipsticks. Well, yeah, you can get the long-lasting yeah. ones. Because yep. what, if, what if you wake up and go, I don't want pink anymore? Oh, it's too late, because I've had my lips tattooed pink. You'd get them tattooed a different colour, wouldn't you? Ooh. Kids today, Mike. She's 21, she's not a kid. She's a kid to me. Just stick. Just <laughs> I think it's very silly. It was like Pete Burns. Well, he had fillers, didn't he? It looked like she's had fillers. Yeah, exactly. So she got she got a great deal. She got a lip tattooed and filler look. Ooh. Because yeah. when you get a tattoo, it goes a bit scabby, doesn't it? So I don't think she's thought about the immediate... Fucking lips. In the trade, that's what they're called. But it doesn't work, does it? What? Big lips. It closes the size of your mouth, so you can't listen. Okay. I, From I, what I, I've heard. I bow down to your, to your expertise in this area. 
yeah. So that that's Jessica, not Jessica. <laughs> yeah. Have you have you even thought about anything like that? On my <laughs> sucking lips. I don't think I have a problem with those. Um, I'm. I don't know. You don't know. I would not inject anything into myself. Would you not? No. What would you have done? Um, just basically full body liposuction. Full body liposuction. Mm. So have your body sucked out of your skin. Just have all my flab sucked out, given to those people that need it. I've said this before. I know. Nobody wants your flab. They do. They need it. And then, you know, let's all, all have a happy, happy day. For some reason, the gallery singing feed the world. I don't know why. Uh, but yeah, that's all from the buzz this week. Well, well, thanks for that, Mike. And kids, don't tattoo your lips. Pass the downstairs ones, but not the upstairs ones. Next, we have Lee in the showbiz. Tattooing your vagina. <laughs> You're watching Chewing the Cud with Lee and Mike. And now let's get ready for the showbiz with the newly tableted Lee. I'm in the future, Mike. Well. Oh, you've got a tablet device as well. I was just talking yeah, about your bed. Yeah. It's good, isn't it? Yeah. I have, have a thing. Do I have pa paper? Laptop? Saving the planet. Yeah. One thing at a time. Yeah. We're going to talk, we're going to talk about some Katie Bryce. Some Katie Price. Some Katie Price. Which bit? Legs. Some of it. <laughs> right. So she has launched her own... Um, Vagina candle. <laughs> Oof. No. Her... Children off, of, off a building. No. <laughs> her own OnlyFans page. Because oh. obviously she's seen the success that Kerry Katona has had with hers. Mm. So she has launched her own. It's an adult subscription. So she it's 11 quid a month Okay. to have direct messages from... Katie Price. Hello, bye! Oh, I'm sure they're very witty mm. and very urbane. Um, so, but what she's decided to do is you can top up your, your subscription extra. So you give her more money. To, give, to, to have stuff of her feet. Right. So <laughs> she can, you, can, you can buy a video of her having her feet massaged for, for five quid. Okay. Okay. So, <laughs> so what she's saying, so what she said is in, in her own imitable way she was like everyone says how nice my feet are i look after my feet really well they're soft small and even though i broke them two years ago they're still intact which is always a bonus from feet um so yeah she broke them in 2020 we've got a picture of it <laughs> oh i just thought she was back from a weekend away <laughs> she was in she was in <laughs> turkey i think she was having well, i've, I've been like that in of... turkey as well <laughs> having to be wheeled some out with me like the procedure apart. done and then she fell and she broke both, both her both her feet. She looks um, like she's just been railed hard. <laughs> I mean, to be she's fair, had a weekend of it. It is it is standard for for Katie. Yeah. So at the press conference where she launched her only fans, uh -huh. oddly dressed as a nun. Um, her explanation was the reason I've come as a nun mm. is because I'm pure and I'm actually innocent. New year, new start. That's that's still her post railing. Um, this is her address, isn't my body, my rules. So she's, she's, she, I mean, you've got to hand it to her. She's literally flipped her getting the nangs out on OnlyFans as, as like a, like a feminist stand. So what? She, Sorry, I'm still. <laughs> she's saying she's pure and innocent. Yeah, my body, my rules. So she's. No, I get. I'm all. I'm all for. All for that. But, but, but yeah, to do with her body. She, well, but, I think she's reset herself. Can you do that? Apparently so. Right, I'm now a virgin. Well, there. So she said, she said, doing my OnlyFans channel is something I'm born to do. It's something that I, I've done glamour for years. I'm so excited. I've got go, no one's in my way, which means she's got no manager. She's got no representative anymore. On my um, own. Gone my <laughs> own. She says, there's no lads mags anymore. So I'm not doing it for nothing. I've always been paid to do what I do. Why would you just give it away? I mean, you know, it's, she, uh, my, my body is valuable. It's my rules. I want to take how I show my body. Okay. So she's embracing herself as a feminist. Okay, I get um, that. Which, you, hmm, yeah. All for okay. it, yeah. Um, She says, I've got my babies to look forward to. 
don't really understand what that means. Is she, she going to have pregnant? more babies? Is she pregnant at the minute? I don't know. Um, this platform, it's not just pictures. I'm just so excited. Um, so she thought that it was just all nudes and porn and stuff. I was really sad when she found out it wasn't. <laughs> um, <laughs> and she, certainly that's not what I will be doing. Oh, you've got to pay for it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's all about empowering women. I it's an insight into my life. Like a reality show, I want to empower women. Oh, like her reality show that went so well. She's, I think she's got one out at the moment, oh. Katie Price's Dirty Mansion or something like that, where they filmed her like cleaning her of a dirty mansion. A dirty mansion. That sounds, <laughs> that sounds like a euphemism. <laughs> <laughs> That's why she's cleaning her. Because I am now. using <laughs> Jeff. Um, it's... <laughs> no, it's not that. Um, <laughs> you want to come over and see my dirty mansion? <laughs> my dirty mansion doors are open. Um, <laughs> Oh, I can't believe what she did in the bedroom. What's she doing? A dirty mansion and a donkey punch. And it's it's one of those things, isn't it? It's... Oh, bless. I, I, it's clearly not aimed at us. Um, I might like the image of small unbroken feet to be rubbed. Like pigs trotters being massaged. Like bound feet. <laughs> Good for her. Yeah, you've got to you've got to make a pound somehow. Eleven pounds, pounds. Eleven pounds. Yeah. yeah. Um, Plus the five if you want to see a massage video. <laughs> anyway, let's move on to something a little bit more highbrow. We love a bit of Dolly Parton on this show, don't we? <laughs> <laughs> we do. When we start talking about Dolly Parton being highbrow, that tells you how low we're. Well, talking. well, Dolly Parton has offered to pay the tuition fees <laughs> right, for Jordan to go back to college. <laughs> 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 To learn how to massage your own fucking feet. Yes. Uh, <coughs> no. She, all, so Dollywood, she owns Dollywood, or co-owns Dollywood. And what she's done is she has um, chosen to pay for the tuition fees Ooh. for college courses for all 11,000 Dollywood staff. Oh, that's good. So um, it doesn't matter when they started, if, they, if, they've, if they've been there for ages or they've only just started, they're still entitled to it regardless. So they can do things like... Business administration, culinary courses, finance, all sorts of different things. This is a picture of Dolly at Dollywood with some of her staff. Very understated, that, that's I mean, as usual. To be fair, that is, that, quite, that, quite. That is, that is my career goal. Nah, just what, to be, to be sort to, of like to be, flanked by butterflies? To, yeah, to be Dolly Parton. Um, and that was flanked, I said there, Lee. Flanked. Flanked by mm. butterflies, yes. Um, so she can't train them to do the other thing, I've tried. No. Um, she's 51 times Grammy nominated. How many wins? I don't know. It didn't say that. Yeah. It didn't say that. Um, so on the 24th of February, so it's already in, it's already come into play, mm -hmm. she'll cover 100% of tuition fees for, for all the listed courses. Um, look, it's not it's a bad thing. Thank Donnie. Oh. Um, about 11,000 employees, so from the first day of employment in the park in Tennessee. Do you know? That's but, did, but did you know? It's just... I think we've spoken about it before. She 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 made headlines in November 2020 when it was revealed that she don donated a hefty amount of money mm -hmm. to the Moderna development of yeah. the vaccine. Um, and she was kind of like she said she said I knew that she had to, I knew I had to do something mm -hmm. about the pandemic, but she didn't want to, people to know that she'd done it. No, she I like Dolly. So I love Dolly because she could be worth more than Jeff Bezos. Could she? Could be, but she gives so much of it away yeah. that she never will be. And she's, never given it to me though. She might have done. You wouldn't know because she does it. She does it all in anonymous. Oh. So Ooh. she could have slipped you a fiver when you weren't looking. Oh, in, in like a birthday card. Or just in your back pocket. <laughs> oh. You when know, you find that random note in your, your coat or something. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. I didn't know that. That was could Dolly. Be Dolly. Wow. Like a, a tooth fairy that doesn't <laughs> take teeth. <laughs> She's not long for this world, is she? She's going to live forever. Do you think? not original left of her. <laughs> Bless. She's been replaced more. Oh, anyway. oh. Good for Dolly. Yes, good for Dolly. We, we love, love Dolly. Dolly. We do. So, are you, are, you, are you a dinosaur fan? A little bit. Seamlessly from Dolly Parton into dinosaurs. Dinosaur. Same, same yeah. era. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. So, are you looking forward to the new Jurassic Park? No. Jurassic World Dominion? No. No, why not? I'm bored of it now. Oh, this is exciting, though. Okay. Right. So, so it's three, 30 years since the first Jurassic Park came get out of the cinema. Get in the f***ing bin, you like. 30, it is. This one's getting angry with me. <laughs> 30, 30 years since Dr. Alan Grant, which is Sam, Sam Neill, Dr. Ellie Sattler, which is Laura Dern, and Jeff Goldman as Dr. Ian Malkin survived the, the first Jurassic Park. So the new the new film that's coming out, which is kind of the final in this kind yeah. of like theme, um, they're they're all getting back in it. They're all starring okay. in the new 
Jurassic Park film, alongside Chris Pratt, who mm. I, get, I, I do Chris Pratt. In this edition of the of the franchise, it's like four years since Black the dinosaurs. <laughs> <laughs> no, since the dinosaurs escaped into yeah, into the, in the winter, to, to, yeah, into yeah. The, yeah. So they have been just like living and loving and laughing. Um, <laughs> <laughs> in where? In a B&M? Love that living their best life. Just like in, in the wild. Yeah. Um, With a live lipstick on a tree. Candles. The back of the, wall, of the walls. Just peeling off slightly. Um, <laughs> so, so these dinosaurs have escaped. <laughs> They they've become kind of like <laughs> yeah, part of nature of like <laughs> so they so they're like we've got we've got a picture of um, a T Rex and a lion so I think that's in the zoo he's gone to the zoo they escaped going to the zoo that's irony iron, isn't it yeah. <laughs> a dinosaur going to a zoo <laughs> filled with captive Sorry. animals going run free <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm a monkey irritating a T-Rex going, look at this, evolution. And the T-Rex going, love that This, obviously, you know, there, there, there's a scene in it where people are just going to the, uh, the drive through and then the T-Rex going, oh, I, I love this Oh, I like this. Me, this one. <laughs> Yeah, apparently it's 30. Oh, well, came out 30 I'm, years ago. And I've like... not aged a day. So it's... <laughs> oh, that's on Cub Pub. Whatever happened. Oh, the bastards killed me. Always it's all, mean. <laughs> it's all about how humanity can live alongside dinosaurs. It's coming out in, in June. So we've got a little oh. bit of time to, to, to... Why are you laughing? Because I've still got images going through my head. That T-Rex is a velociraptor's watching a film. At a drive through well, well, you know, like, like, Are there. you a dinosaur? No. <laughs> <laughs> I think you are, aren't you? No. Um, <laughs> concessions. So it's like children, nine pounds, adults, 15 pounds, oh. concessions or dinosaurs. I'm, I'm very excited. But I've got, I've got a dinosaur joke. Oh, okay. Right. What do you call a gay dinosaur? Triceratop, Triceratop. That's the end of this week's slow biz news. Shh. Finish now. Wow. What do you call a, a dinosaur with no eyes? Do you think he saw us? No. Names. Well, thank you very much for that, Lee. Just stick around because coming up next we have our game of the week. You're watching Chewing the Cud. This week we're going to play Step Back in Time, so you need to bog off into your void. Go. I'm now fading away, fading away, fading... Oh, well. well, that wasn't hammy at all. Game of the Week. Where am I? What happened? You've taken a step back in time. <sighs> Oh, look, see? Oh, <gasps> your vortices are raveling around you as we speak. Oh, my glittering arena. So all he has to do is work out... Well, he's going to tell me where he is in time with a, with a clue. Got a decade for me? Which, which decade would you like, mate? Would you like the 60s, 70s, 80s or 90s? 90s, please. The 90s? Yeah. Okay. So you've got to answer this question about yeah. the 90s. Okay. Uh -huh. So which sugar-free version of a popular soft drink was introduced in the US on Independence Day. Oh, actually, sorry, I'm sorry, I'm, re I'm reading one from the 80s. <laughs> sorry, I'll just pop that back, I'll get the 90s. That would be the right one. <laughs> Okie dokie. What could most shops in England and Wales do for the first time on the 28th of August, 1994? Open on a Sunday. Indeed, trade on Sundays. That's something that you know about, isn't it? I've been trading on Sundays since the early 2000s. Mm, well, getting trade in on a Sunday. Um, well done, well done. Now then, what, what decade would you like to, to, to pop we'll in? We'll do the 80s. Do the 80s? Yeah, yeah. So okay. Talk about soft drink for a minute. Well, I've, got, I've chosen a different, oh. different, you know. 
So, how old was Lady Diana Spencer when she married Prince Charles in July 1981? Was she 18, 20, or 22? <laughs> I nearly went, she died in 1997. Why is that in the 80s? <laughs> uh, <laughs> she was 19. No, 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 19, 19. No, she was, was wrong. She oh. was 20. Oh. I forgot how young she was when she married that old sausage. Um, yeah, the poor love. All those jewels that she had to wear and mm. all those big trips she had to go on. and the staircase all those staircases to fall down. All those, um, all those men she could have sex with. And... Oh. I liked Diana. Didn't, and, Didn't yeah. meet her, don't know. Did what? Didn't meet her, don't know her. Oh, okay. Um, so, no, that was wrong. So, what What would you like to go for now? Let's go for one of your eras and go for 60s. <laughs> Okie dokie. Which brand of slot car racing... What did you just call me? <laughs> Which brand of slot car racing became one of the most successful toys of the 1960s? Slot car racing is something I'm into. Slot car or slot car? I know what I said. And I know what you said. <laughs> and I know where I am. And I know where you are. So... <laughs> well, that just means that your medication's working, doesn't it? <laughs> that was scale electric. Did we have an answer? I said scale electric. You got it right. I did, yeah. Did you have a scale electric? My brother had a scale electric, oh. which we, we, it was one of those joint presents. Oh. So we got to open it, and so it became his rather than being a joint uh, Scale electric was a bit rubbish. They never stayed on the track. Hey, cool. They had that little metal thing underneath, didn't they? The little, Precious. yeah, and it was always, you'd have to keep bending it and then putting it back on the track. Rubbish. Okay, um, okay where would you like to go next? I'd like to go home, if that's possible. Well, you can't. In that case, because I've not had it, I'm going to go for the 1990s. And is okay. Okay, oh, this is very easy. Which 1990s TV theme tune began with... Now, this is a story all about how. Going to your auntie and uncle in Bella. We've done this. We've actually literally performed this on the show. Okay. Friends. <sighs> No. No. What, what was it then? Fresh Prince of Bel Air. Oh. Do you know what? There's a new version of the Fresh Prince. Mm. I don't like it. Because it's young people. Well, do you know what? It's not a comedy. It's very, it's very hip. It's very street. Um, and I, I don't care for it. Just thought I'd put that out there, Will Smith. <laughs> the show busy. I'm sorry, but I'm just, I'm just putting it out there because I just don't. All the same characters. But it's just Will Smith. Just, no, Will Smith directed it. I was about to say dead then. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's news that should have been in the show, bit. Yeah, there's all the same characters, so there's, but they're all very hunky, though. I'm that's right. the thing I like about it. So, Uncle Phil. Yeah. Daddy. Mmm. Okay. Raw. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. Um, okay, what... what, what? <laughs> We're getting back to the game. Yeah, yeah. All right, that'll be nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. What, what decade the would you like? 1970s, please. The 70s, Okay. In which film was Tony Monero the name of the leading character? Tony Monero. A streetcar named Desire? No. Saturday Night Fever. Okay. Tony Monero. You're making it sound like I know because I was alive in the 70s when I wasn't. But everybody's seen Saturday Night Fever. I haven't seen Saturday Night Fever. Really? Really. Gosh. Why would I watch something about someone getting sweaty? Getting sweaty? Yeah, when you get fever, you get sweaty, don't you? It's all disco dancing. Okay. Um, what, de <laughs> what decade would you like to go for next? Can I go back in time ten minutes so I didn't witness that? No. That will be with you forever. You've replaced the whale in my nightmares. Um, I'll go for the 80s, please. The 80s. Okay. Who starred as the main character, Jack Torrance, in the psychological horror film, The Shining. Jack Torrance. Yes. Jack Torrance. Why are you laughing? Uh, it just sounds like a drag name. Jack Torrance. <laughs> no. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the stage, Jack Torrance. It does sound like a drag name. Okay. Yeah, it does. Mm. Yeah. Um, 
that would be the irrepressible, the ever wonderful Jack Nicholson. It would be. Here's Johnny. That was my impression of um of that. Yeah. So, moving on. Moving on. Moving on. Next <laughs> one. Red <laughs> red red ram. Red ram. Red ram. Um. What? <laughs> what decade would you like to go for next? The 60s, please. The 60s, okay. Mancunian model Samantha Joost was the regular disc girl on which music TV show that debuted in 1964? I haven't a clue. You've I got think, the answer I think, I think, yeah, I've got a clue. Well, I've got the answer in front of me. Yeah, so I've I got would, a clue. If oh, somebody asked me, I wouldn't have known. Was it Desert Island Discs? That was on the radio. I don't know. Um, no, it was Top of the Pops. Oh. oh and what did I... this girl do? Um, d- um, did she, did she, did she like dance? You know when they couldn't get the act on, they just they just had the girl that was dancing, which became Legs on. What was it called? Gallery. What was it called? There's hot legs. <laughs> Pans people. Hot gossip. Um, Verica Spains. They that was slightly a, a couple of decades later. Yeah. Oh, we so sorry, Mike. Sorry, are we boring you? Um, what? Sorry. sorry. <laughs> just reminiscing about the good old days. Yeah. Um, what would you? <laughs> what would you like to go for next? I'd like to go for a shot of vodka and a Valium. I can't help you with that. But what decade? Mm. Okay. Against whom? Was England playing in 1990 when Paul Gascoigne wept after being booked? A different team. It was. But for which okay. country? You didn't ask which country, you just asked whom. And if I answered the question with a different team, which is no. the correct answer, so I get a point. Not the answer. Not the answer on your card, but it's the correct answer. Uh, West Germany. Oh. Mm. Well, that would have been pre war, wouldn't it? Remember they had, that was a, they had that song, didn't they? What the wall? No, the the World Cup people. What was it? You got to give the do 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 that one. Do do for England, England. A river de cheats one on one. Okay, um, what, let's just do one more decade. I let you pick the decade. Ooh, I'm feeling mm. generous. Oh, oh, I'm going to go for 80s. The brand name Breville became synonymous Toasties. with... Oh, it was a sandwich toaster in the 80s. Yes, because there was a trick to, to getting the end bits just right, which was to make sure you put cheese over the end. Oh. And then the cheese would... When it went to that hard bit, when you pressed it down, the cheese would actually be in it still, so you'd actually be able to separate out and chew on it. I used to get very, very, very badly burned. Just in general, not by sandwich yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that was by your parents. <laughs> Behave. Just going out into daylight to yeah. burn me. Yeah. Well, well, you, some you got right, some you didn't get right. Game of two halves. It's not a game of two halves at all. It's a game of one half. But thankfully that's over now. So stick around because coming up next is Crafty Queens, or Punishment as it's also known. <laughs> Welcome back to Chewing the Cud. Now it's time to consider all the bad choices we've made in our life as we go through Crafty Queens. Mike. Yes, Lee. We're going to do something lovely today. I bet we're not. I, w- I will eventually make you do something that you will hang on your wall and i think today might just be that day <laughs> okay <laughs> might be myself so before you you have I've, I've done a blue pete and i've already prepared some of it oh is it time. done yeah it's not done but i've prepared oh. so, so i have i have um got a I got a got a canvas and i have ombre it blue with the sponge effect yeah which i can see you've done dabbing i have done with dabbing. The sponge and stroking yes it's all about texture yeah. Um, I'm not going to tell you what we're going to do. I'm just gonna, we're going to guide you through it, and then you'll be able to guess what it is. Okay. So you have a dark colour paint. 
I do. I have black. You have black. So what I would like you to do is eat it. To, no, don't eat it. Take some. Take you paint one of your paintbrushes. Uh huh. Now, do you, do you, can you recall what a tree looks like without any leaves or or or, or foliage? Yes. Right? Yeah. But what I would like you to do is, in the middle of your canvas, mm -hmm. is paint a tree without any, just the branches. Just okay. The, do you want my, my, does it matter whether I'm landscape or portrait? Would Whichever you? way you would like. Okay. Although I have done it, you know, ombre in a particular way, but, you know, it's up to you. Well, just tell me which way around you want me to have the... You do it what... I'm not about... I'm not about stifling... Yes, you are, because you just started to be passive-aggressive. <laughs> I'm not even starting yet. <laughs> um, do, do it landscape, Mike. Is that... Is that long ways? No. You mean portrait. <laughs> Dark blue at the top. Dark blue at the top, right. And you want me to do a tree? Yes. Right. Just, just, a, just a brand, just branchy tree. Well, this is very, this is a very therapeutic one today. It's very, yeah. um, very, yeah, very Bob Ross. This one today. Really, I like Bob Ross. Yeah, well, you'll, you'll like this. Yeah. So we're gonna, we're gonna make a little tree. We're gonna make a little tree. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter if it goes wrong. We go well. Because we can. Yeah. We can. Yeah. Um. Do you? Do you <laughs> Do you have a favourite tree, Mike? I do. What form might that one be? Huh? What's your favourite tree? It's a family tree. A family tree? Hey! Oh. Did, did I play on words? You did. Um, I, I don't have a favourite favourite tree, but I, I tell you the tree that I do detest the most is a silver birch. Why is that? Because they're everywhere. Are they one of those invasive ones? Um, no, it's the, they were a cheap tree to put up in the fast growing, so lots of councils put them up in the um, 70s and 80s when they're doing housing estates. Oh. And now they're everywhere and they're just boring trees. Okay. Well, this is this is not a silver birch. How are you getting on with your with your with your branch? I'm almost done with my tree. You're all, well, okay. Well, I think I think I'm quite happy with my. Um... You're happy with that? Okay, that's fine. Yeah, are you happy with yours? I'm very happy with mine. Oh, right, you have some bubble wrap. I do have some next bubble wrap. To you. So what I would like you to do is to take a bit of your bubble wrap and pop it. No. Roll it into a ball, but with the pot with the like the little sort of pustules on the outside. Nope. Okay. Don't pop it all. Okay. Otherwise, I've, I've it got, won't work. I've got I've got my bubble wrap with the the. Bubbles on like, it, like it's a snowball. Yeah, yeah. So choose which colour you want to use. You. I've chosen purple and pink. Okay. I've I've chosen orange and green. Orange and green. So so I'm I'm going to go with purple first. I'm just going to dip my um my ball into the paint. Uh huh. Yeah. Once you've got a bit of paint on on the thing. Yeah. Yeah. You're gonna sort of staple it. No. Stipple. That's the word. Okay. Um, <laughs> on the across the tree because it's good. Do it lightly. Don't do it heavy. Don't be heavy-handed. <laughs> That's not worked. Um, um, because this. Uh huh. Oh, you see, the more you do it, and the more um pattern you get, mm -hmm. the better it looks. Okay. So this is like, um, you know, potato prints. No. Um, what happens in May? Um, blossom Bank trees. Bank holidays. <laughs> you're making you're going to be making a blossom tree oh, okay so in, instead of leaves we're having like blossom a bit like you know like in china oh cherry blossom first yeah that kind of thing yeah i'm sure that's japan then that's be that's beautiful now because you want a bit you want a bit of texture we want a bit of dimension um, mm -hmm. get another bit of, um, all that ball of, have you forgotten words? I'm just so into it, Mike. <laughs> I'm so into it. I'm going to go with my pink this time. Okay. And then that, you're going to stipple. What I'm, do you know what I'm going to do? Ooh, so because I don't want a lot of paint on, I'm just going to, just going to dab it around the, uh, around the bowl. Oh, you mean like I've been doing? Oh, is that what you've been doing? Yeah, that's oh. what I've been doing. Oh, right, okay. Um, right. Because I'm not a rank amateur. Oh, that is... Oh. Oh, that's just... That's taken it to a whole new level, that. Oh. Oh, do you know what? I've got a semi. This is so... Uh-huh. 
You don't want to obliterate the, the branches. No, I've not done. You don't want to do that. No. You want you you want to you want to have them. Okay. And then when when you're happy with your foliage, yeah, yeah, you're happy with that, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, cotton buds. Got a couple yeah. of cotton buds there. Uh -huh. Right. Dip them in whichever colour you want to first. Right. And you're gonna where they like it like the the, the blossom is is falling from the tree. Uh huh. Put little blobs. Little, little dabs. And you don't have to dip it in your paint, you can just dip it in your, um... Just to kind of give it that, oh... I'd love to sit under this tree, you know. Yeah, so I'd love to see you sit under that tree in a lightning storm. Oh, that, that's... That, I think... I'm not going to spoil it, so... I'm, and then, on your actual tree, you can kind of give... Give it a little... Give it a little bit of it. Yeah, I've, little bit. I've done that. Okay, right, now, just to, you know, what, what else, that, I mean, to me, that's perfect, but, okay. it's, you know, we could do more. You've got some glitter, Mike. While it's still wet, ooh, yeah, a little bit of glitter in the palm of your hand. I'm not touching glitter, it stays with you forever. I'm going to sprinkle it, just on the, oh, just on the wet paint. Sprinkle it on the wet. Oh. I actually quite like the feeling of pinching glitter. Wait, is that a euphemism? No, it's just a, it's a very pleasant tactile like Pinching cloth? No, pinch, pinching glitter. Pinching cloth, did you just say? <laughs> you never heard that phrase before? Yeah, it's not a euphemism for pretending to poo. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm, so I've done that since I'm bright. <laughs> I'm just laughing at producer Jay, who's literally pissing himself at the side of titched, <laughs> touching cloth. Pinching glitter. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, I'm going to put a bit dark, bit, bit <laughs> dark and stuff on it. Just a bit of glitter there, a bit of glitter there, yeah, around there. Oh, I think I might have to stop myself because I think any more, mm. it'll just look cheap. <laughs> there we go, and then. And then, just, 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 tap... I'm already doing that. Like, tap it off. Oh. Okay. Turn it round. Oh, that's beautiful. Overcome by emotion. Wow. What else can I say? In a relaxing, calm voice, I'm going to say, if you can't get any pain, or even any vagin, be a crafty queen. Why is it a Christmas tree? I told you it was going to be a Christmas tree. I said to you, it's looking like a Christmas tree. But it's not supposed to be a Christmas tree. It's supposed to be a blossom tree, Mike. Christmas trees blossom? It's not what I asked for. No, but it's what you got. Welcome <sighs> to dating me. <laughs> <laughs> Disappointing. Yeah, disappointment. Mm, Lasted a few time. minutes. Anyway, that's almost the end of the show for this week. Remember to join us on our social media at the Cud TV. Our website is thecud.tv. And of course, on YouTube and podcast, just search for Chewing the Cud. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you all soon. Bye. Bye. Lost the tree. The Christmas tree. <laughs> Don't. <laughs> Don't. <laughs>